All right, so hi everybody, this is Christina Aguilera. Uh, we actually do both do real estate in St. Louis and that's kind of how I got to know her. Um, we've been social media friends for now, like I wanna say three years and have talked back and forth, but I kind of wanted to bring her on board because she is super inspiring. She has an amazing story and she is just rocking the real estate world. So Christina, tell me a little bit about yourself, your life before real estate, what kind of prepped you for real estate, led you into it, all of that. Introduce yourself. All right. Awesome. So I'm Christina Aguilera. Um, I'm originally from Miami. So I actually live in St. Louis. I've lived here for seven years, but I'm originally from Miami. I'm first generation American. So when I was 14, um, my parents actually moved to a small town outside of Dallas. And that was probably really what started like the real estate journey. Um, when I like look at things, that was the first time that my parents ever sold a house and bought another one. Um, and I just remember like the kind of desperation that my family was in because they couldn't technically afford two mortgages, right? And so we had to move for work and we still had another house in Miami. So that was like the first time, but it kind of spearheaded. I graduated high school very early because I actually hated where I lived. Um, it was the first time I had gone through like a culture shock. Um, no one around me looked like me uh, and I was 15. So <laughs> that was really challenging. And um, ever since then, I've just been chasing culture shocks. <laughs> but but um, I graduated high school early and my first job, um, I was 17, my first like real job was actually, I worked at a call center and I used to cold call for an insurance agent that used to resell the leads. And like, it's so crazy when I think about it, because I'm like, yo, this is like full circle. Like, <laughs> like life is like full circle. Um, so I did that. And then I made my first six figures actually selling insurance in a call center um, in Orlando. That's where I made my first six figures, moved to St. Louis. Um, and honestly, I, I was very gifted in school. Like, I mean, I graduated early, got my bachelor's in international business. I had my MBA. And then I got to the point where I'm just like, bro, like, what do I really want out of life? Like, what does this look like for me? Um, and I knew that I didn't necessarily, I just didn't know what it was. So I started just researching. I looked at Forex and I joined um, a mentorship program. I spent $90,000 on credit cards. This. Yeah. <laughs> I said $90,000 on credit cards. I was talking to someone yesterday and they were like, oh yeah, it was the best $30,000 I spent, even though it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. And honestly, probably the truth, like, you know, it spearheaded me. It was that monkey on my back. Like I had to bet on myself. And for me, it was 90,000 for someone else. It might be $200. Like it doesn't really matter what the amount is. It's just that I was willing to bet on myself and like burn the bridges and burn all the boats kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's what spearheaded it. And then obviously $90,000 in debt. I don't have any liquid cash. My credit cards are maxed out. So I have to wholesale. Yep. And um, one of the things that they had taught me in this program was to pull foreclosures. And so that's what I did. And I just door knocked and I got my first deal. I made $3,000. And at that point, it was just real to me. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, that's the beginning of the journey for sure. <laughs> So why real estate? So I don't like, no one in my family has ever done real estate. Um, I mean, I don't, honestly, I think it was just like the opportunity. It just seemed like I can make a lot of money. And the reality was like, I knew that for the, the impact that I wanted to make in the world, I had to be rich. Like I had to be wealthy. I had to have money um, in order to, to do things that I felt were impactful for like the world. Like the world happens because of money. Yeah. Um, and I knew that. I, I understood that as a fundamental concept. So I think that's really what attracted me to real estate. Obviously, I fell in love with the process, but the reality was I didn't know anything about anything. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know nothing about construction. I had never done anything. So it wasn't like, oh, I've been around in my whole life and I'm like super obsessed with it. No, it was that I saw it as a vehicle for um, honestly impacting change. I knew that housing was like the epicenter of life. And if someone has stable housing, they can, they can actually, they're, they're, they're a little bit more safe and therefore they're not in survival mode. So I understood that as a fundamental concept. And I think that's really what attracted me um, to real estate. But, but the reality was I knew I can make a shit ton of money. So I was <laughs> excited for that part. 
I tell people all the time, like, let's be real here. You get into real estate for money, but it ends up being so much more than that once you're in it. You really see that it's different. And so what do you like so much about the real estate field? Now that you're like in it and you're really successful in it, which we'll jump into a little bit of where you are now, but what do you like so much about the real estate field? What keeps you there? Yeah. So, you know, it's interesting because like people usually like they like love design and they love like making things pretty. That is not me. Like I have no desire. Like all my rehabs look the same. We put the same flooring in the same kitchen cap. Like I'm the queen of process. Like I want the same thing because I like to live like with ease and flow Mm -hmm. And I wasn't always this way. I was always very reactive. Like I didn't use a plan. I didn't do any of this stuff in like, like honestly, two years ago, I didn't do it like this um, because I was surviving. Like it was just this, like, I have to perform and like overperform. And I just couldn't like get out of my own way, honestly. So um, I think honestly, what keeps me in real estate is like my passion for um, employing people and giving people opportunities. Um, my best friend works with me, um, all my staff, like that's honestly, I just feel like it's such an impactful place, but I also feel like housing in general is like the epicenter of where everything starts. And so because of my portfolio, my rental portfolio, like I do section eight housing, I do nonprofit housing, I do regular market tenants. And I know that being able to provide a stable environment for children, for single mothers, for, for family in general, even if they're just starting, it's just such a core, core part of like life in general. Um, and I, you know, I invest in marginalized communities. So I'm in North city, North County. Um, a percentage of my portfolio is in like, I would say, you know, median household income, but most of my stuff is actually where people are below the poverty line. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's really my passion and that's evolved over time. I was always very attracted to like marginalized communities and being able to impact people um, and give them resources and let them know that people care about them. I love that so much. It's such like a, you could see your passion in this and it's, it's amazing. I love it. I love it. You make me excited <laughs> and I only wholesale. So it makes me like, like maybe it starts that way. way. Like, I mean, you think like, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, like I just wholesale or I, you know, I just do this or I just have 10 rentals. And I'm always, I always tell people like not to call you out or anything, but I'm always like, you don't just do something like sure. there's a, there's a trickle effect to, to just, to just wholesaling, right? Because now you put that property in the hands of someone that really loves the community and like wants to impact and wants to give people safe, affordable housing that is passionate about you know, you, inv you wholesale in South city and like South city has some of the most beautiful houses, like, Oh, stunning. They're beautiful. <sighs> and <laughs> like, some people are so passionate about architecture. Like they have, yeah. like, it literally sets their soul on fire. If they do four rehabs a year, they're like obsessed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like they're the happiest person in the world. And that's literally what I want for people. I just want people to be happy. If it's four houses for you, if it's a hundred houses, like right now we're sitting on 58 rehabs right now. Like that's amazing. That's <laughs> my level. <laughs> but like that doesn't like someone could be even happier with like not having a team and not managing people. Sure. Okay. So let's talk about we know where you started, right? So let's talk about where you're at now. What are your current investments and what are you doing? Because I know you're impressive, but let's share that with everybody else. <laughs> um, okay. So I self-manage um and operate uh 200 we're seeing I like it was 280 we sold like a ton when the market was a little crazy um because there wasn't a ton of inventory for like first time home buyers so we kind of jumped at that opportunity to be able to put inventory out on the marketplace and then just recoup later once we start buying again um so i think we're sitting at like 140 150 right now and that includes like flips um we have a couple flips going so we're at 58 rehab projects currently under management um we do it in phases so some of our houses sit for a while um because we we kind of like streamline when our tenants move out we go in and do rehabs and stuff um so that's that portion of it and we flip um my best friend's my project manager that's probably the most meaningful and impactful relationship for me um, my broker is another really really good friend of mine so she lists all my properties we all work together which I think that's like the epicenter of like, 
of everything for me. It's just like brings me so much happiness. Like we get to work together. We love each other. There's like a lot of strengths and weaknesses um, that we like pick up for each other. Like I'm just really good at the process, the flow, the systems, raising the money, doing that part. And then Trisha, who's my project manager, my best friend, she's really good at managing contractors, the vendors, and just, I'm just really passionate about putting people in their zone of genius yeah. and strengthening strengths and like kind of forgetting about the weakness. Like the weakness doesn't matter if you're really in your zone of genius and you're in your zone, right? Yeah. Um, but that part, and then um, I also have a consulting company. My consulting company basically goes into wholesaler companies, rehabbing companies, new construction, um, even education. And I help them um, do all their SOPs. So that was like one of the things I remember. It was so annoying. Everybody's like, document everything. I'm like, what am I documenting? I don't know what to right. document. <laughs> They're like, just make a video. Okay. And then I give the video and no one understands what I'm saying. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, so I build, I build SOPs um, for investors from like the second that they go under contract and all their exit strategies so that they can actually have an in-house transaction coordinator, operations coordinator to really manage the transaction, making sure that utilities get turned on when we go to closing, making sure our assignment fees are correct on the HUD. Um, so I, I have a training platform where we train that operations person on how to read leases, how to communicate with buyers, how to communicate with sellers, um, really be within, you know, within an organization, within a team. And that's my passion project right now outside of like the nonprofit stuff. Um, I'm working on some like urban farm kind of stuff just as a passion project, um, in a marginalized community. Yeah. That's amazing. I love it. It's like, I've, I've heard about this. I followed you, you know, we've talked many times, but to like hear it in detail, it's just, it's really awesome. Okay. So let's jump into, and this one might be something you have to think on. What is your biggest mistake, but what did you learn from it? Yep. Yeah, sounds easy. I know my biggest. Yeah. Some of us already know that top mistake. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm like, this one takes the cake. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, so when I had like, I had already started doing some rehabs and I got really big for my britches and I had 10 properties going. I had one GC on six properties, mm -hmm. all draws, all in random different places. Um, and the result of that was my lack of management, my, ma my lack of leadership, my lack of process, um, there was not a lot of accountability and only I can take responsibility for that because what happened as a result is me losing $120,000 wow. um, that I eventually had to sue for. And it was just, it was just crazy. It was madness. Um, I was very smart. Um, I was smart in the case that when we went in for that last draw, I had a very, very bad feeling. So I told him, I said, hey, if you want this $20,000, like I need to lean on your house. So at least I had that to recoup. So I was a little savvy in that space, but my lack of understanding of the flow of things and just getting too big for my britches too fast because I wanted to eat, I had this burning desire to do more, um, really got in my way. Um, you know, I didn't really have someone locally that I could, you know, see their projects. I was just, I was just running. Like I was telling people, I'm like, Christina was successful because she hustled her way through and pushed through every single mistake. Yeah. It has nothing to do with like building it the right way. Yeah. Now, like, that's why like now I'm like not even scared, you know, like I'm like, bro, I could lose everything. I'll build this better, faster. Yeah. Better. <laughs> Like, I don't care. What do you know what I'm like, do? I can do it better. <laughs> well, you have to make mistakes, right? Because that's how you learn. And in case like you do have to start over, you know what to do and it's going to save you so much time. Exactly. I mean, and even then, like, that's where like, I'm like, okay, there has to be a system. There has to be a process in how a contractor is even onboarded, yeah. how the flow of construction happens, right? Yeah. If that is your passion, but even if you back that up all the way to wholesaling, like there is steps, like things have to happen before other things happen. Definitely. <laughs> and if you can, if you can like brain dump that portion and like the flow, you can see like what you're good at, where the gaps are, what you should delegate, what not. And that's literally like the lifeline. And if you ever get lost, you know exactly where to go back to, right? You know what's next. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, so that's the mistake. $120,000. <laughs> Hey, we learned though, right? We learned, you know, you learn a lot. 
<laughs> you have everything like set up good and set up well. Now, yeah. now I can tell other people how not to make 120000 yeah. Exactly. Laura, you know, my mom, she says the same thing. She says, you know, I went through all these mistakes so that I could teach other people how to avoid this. I paid hundreds of thousands in lawyer fees because of it. And that's what you do. So tell me a little bit, if you could pick one thing, what are you most proud of so far in your journey? Um, that's an interesting question. Uh, honestly, I do think it's just like the relationships and the cultivation of like my ecosystem and like the people that are around me. I feel like it's a really big testament to the work that I've done internally. Yeah. Um, but it's also a testament to like the vision. Um, and some people, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, my why? Um, you know, I don't have kids. I don't have a husband. Um, and most people, when they say their why, they're talking very specific to like their small family unit. Yeah. And because I don't have those things, obviously I have parents, my parent, like I started my consulting company my parents own 20% of that company. Um, they don't do anything in it. They just own 20% of it. Um, you know, my brother's extremely successful, self-sufficient. So when you look at it from that piece, right, it's just such a small minded approach. Like you're obviously going to impact your family. Like they're a byproduct of everything. And sure. since I didn't have that, I was able to think bigger. So from the very beginning, my mission was young black men, ages 12 to 24 that are marginalized community. How do we give them the resources? How do we give them this? How do we give them that? And then that's like literally been the epicenter of everything for me personally. Yeah. Um, and as a result of that, I think everything else works. Yeah. That's because awesome. I know that's my, my mission or my vision in this world. Right. Oh, I love that. I love that so much. Okay. I have two more questions for you. Um, what do you wish you'd known at the beginning that you now know? Um, honestly, picking the right mentor, um, picking the right mentor would have been probably like the biggest thing. And the reason I say that is obviously you don't know what you don't know, right? But a good mentor, you can talk to other students and they will tell you the value that that person gave them. There is literally some of the most phenomenal people. You really need to be clear on what you want, right? Like what kind of lifestyle you want, what kind of systems processes. Like for me, I don't like, I'm not, I'm at the point, I'm only 31, but I'm at the point where like, I don't want to wear myself out like that is not desirable for me anymore yeah in the past like that was okay so if I hired a mentor maybe in the past like I was okay following someone that hustles mm -hmm. now in this season of my life and depending on where you know wherever you are in your life is like you're gonna follow someone that has proven systems proven process proven vision right like proof of concept like your mom you know what I mean like that's proof of concept like that's the kind of life that someone wants to live yeah like not overworking themselves, not overexerting themselves because that's not sexy. Like that doesn't allow for life, right? Yeah. Like it doesn't, it doesn't allow for being able to dip in the pool, go on vacation, like do whatever it is that you want. Like that's, that's not why we get into real estate. Yeah. Um. So I think I just wish that, and I, I mean, I don't wish now, but I wish that if I was able to tell someone that, that I would say like, Hey, just do your research and realize that Every person that you meet is a cheat code. Like there's something that you can learn from me. There's obviously something you can learn from Liz. Like there's someone you could learn from everyone that literally can catapult you. And something that would take you five years to figure out will only take you two weeks, yeah. a week. You know what I mean? Um, even like with my clients, I see it all the time because, you know, they come to me to like basically brain dump and I organize their SOPs. And one of the things they're like, bro, like I've been trying to do this for three years. And I always tell people when they're like trying to be hesitant, I'm like, yo, here's the thing. If it's about money, we'll figure that part out. But the reality is, is I can fix this entire problem, train the position, put someone in the seat to where you're not reactive anymore in two weeks. Right. If we delay this, this is going to be worse. Yeah. The cost of opportunity. Yeah. And that's, and that's, that's really what it is. Like really realizing like what kind of value uh, another thing that I wish, um, that I feel like people don't talk about enough. I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but I think we're so focused on trying to get good at the shit that we're not good at that. We don't realize like, yo, if you're really good at something, just do that thing mm -hmm. and find the people around you that are good at the stuff that you're bad at. Yeah. 
And I actually, I got that from you and I implied that into my own, just from like your Instagram stuff. And I was telling my mom, I was like, we need to hire people where they thrive in that position because we don't like doing it. And so when we don't like do it, you tend to procrastinate or it just doesn't come through as authentic. So we mm -hmm. started hiring that stuff out and it is a world of difference. Yeah, it may cost money. Yeah, it may do all this, but you make more money and you do more because you're able to do what you want to do and you're inspired by that. And then you're not stuck doing the stuff that's really just not what you want to do. <laughs> and there's not like a delay, right? Because like yeah. you're saying that that, that procrastination it's like, if you don't like to do dispo emails, right? Obviously you like the end result of getting money, right? Yeah. Like you, you understand that concept. You want to make money, but there's this like transitional period between going under contract, creating your dispo email template, gathering information that most people absolutely hate. Mm -hmm. So I started automating it. Right. But that is like a cost right there that like us not putting the initiative to like get the deal out could delay us two days. Yeah. And we, we just don't like to do it. So we're just not going to do it. Or we're like dragging our feet. When if you hired like a dispo assistant and they love to put stuff together and their salary, you know, in the Philippines is only $800 a month, $700 a month. Like, bro, that's one deal. Yeah. I agree. All right, final question. I started implying though. <laughs> no, I love it. So one <laughs> last question. What are three best tips of advice do you have for a woman who wants to succeed in real estate? Um, I would say stay in your zone of genius, right? Um, I would say consume information, right? Consume it, but do not limit yourself to being an expert before you take action, right? Because a lot of times like we sit in this space and we feel like we don't know enough, like you know enough. All, you don't need to know A through Z. You need to know A, B, C, D. And then once you get to D, you can figure out the rest. But like the result is very important. Um, and I would say the last thing, which has obviously been my superpower, it's allowed me to buy a lot of houses, wholesale a lot, is to, as women, we're very emotional. Um, if you can remove emotion yes. from real estate investing, and the best way to do this is to use a calculator and make sure that the equation is numbers driven and not feeling driven, right? You can keep your feelings for your family, your friends, your boyfriend, your husband, keep, keep feelings and emotions. But when it comes to this space of the business, being feel feelings um, gets you in trouble, right? You're going to overspend on your rehab budget because you think something's cute. Okay, well, no one else thinks it's cute and no one cares. Okay? Yep. Just be honest with you. Two, you're going to over rehab because you're like, oh, I really love this. And really, you're not going to make any more money than if you just pick the cheaper product. Yeah. And three, you're going to try to stretch numbers because you want to help the seller so bad but the seller doesn't want to help themselves or they cannot be helped. Mm -hmm. And as a result, you put yourself in a financial bind um, because you want to help so bad. So one, obviously have empathy, right? Like have empathy for people and like help them. But sometimes you're not the best resource for them. Maybe they do have to file bankruptcy. Maybe they do need a loan modification and you might not make money off of that, but just referring that and getting onto the next deal is way more valuable um, than like trying to squeeze an orange that's already been like, we already got the juice out of it. Like we're, we're tapped out at this point. I love so, it. Um, yeah. So I think those are the three things. Um, but the, probably the most important is really like to remove emotion when it comes from investing, um, and have like a proven, a proven calculator or a proven system to where you can analyze and underwrite deals really easily. I love it. Okay, anything else you'd like to share? And also, how can people get in contact with you if they wanted to reach out? Um, so I'm on Instagram. That's probably where I'm most active. I post on stories and on my feed a lot. Um, I just share my life, what we're doing, how we're doing it. Um, it's just Christina, K-R-I-S-T-I-N-A, Aguilera, and then an underscore at the end. Um, honestly, I just think, I think, I think we covered most of the things. I just feel like if you are getting into any realm, or maybe you don't even care about real estate. Um, but if you're getting into any realm, I would just remember that just because you're not good at something initially doesn't mean that it's not a good fit for you. And almost any position can be hired. Um, I've learned the power of like delegation over the last couple of years, and it has saved me from burnout. It has saved me from, you know, emotional 
turmoil that you don't really need to be going through. And maybe right now you're in a financial situation where you can't even see how you can even afford to pay someone to do anything. But just focus on one thing, focus on the one deal, the one place that you can like catapult and change your life. And then, you know, once you make that money, you can always reinvest and like have four months of salary out um, to now it's two people working on the business than just one person. But just the power of collaboration, um, whether it's a partner or um, or an employee. Awesome. Thank you so much Thank for you. on today. I'm like talking with my hands so much. I'm so Hispanic. I'm like... Italian, get it. <laughs> <laughs>